Hey folks, we got a four batch of Nintendo news for you today. Well, really three stories and a bonus story from Sony because we're going to have a special PlayStation related live stream later this week. We're going to have to get into that. But before we do, I want to remind you that we actually are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. So if, if we hit 100,000 subscribers by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we are going to give away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. That's that art book, the steel book, the poster, those pins, that really cool looking box, obviously a copy of the game. That's really awesome. I hope you guys decide to like and subscribe and let's get into the news. And our first story deals with a massive story that broke earlier today. It's an update on an earlier report last year that there was going to be a 10 year partnership between Microsoft and Nintendo for Call of Duty. But that was just more of a verbal commitment. There wasn't anything legally binding about it. Well, that changed early this morning as Phil Spencer and the head of Nintendo, Shintaro Furukawa, signed a legally binding document about Call of Duty. This was announced by the president of Microsoft, not just anyone, the actual president of Microsoft on Twitter. Here's what he said. We've now signed a binding 10-year contract to bring Xbox games to Nintendo's gamers. This is part of our commitment to bring Xbox games and Activision titles like Call of Duty to more players on more platforms. This does suggest, by the way, this deal might include more than Call of Duty, but let's get into the image that he put up with it. Microsoft and Nintendo have now negotiated and signed a binding 10-year legal agreement to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo players the same day as Xbox with full feature and content parity so they can experience Call of Duty just as Xbox and PlayStation gamers enjoy Call of Duty. We are committed to providing long-term equal access to Call of Duty to to other gaming platforms, bringing more choice to more players and more competition to the gaming market. Now, this deal, with the Microsoft's looking to close the Activision Blizzard deal this summer, so this probably won't kick in until 2024 just for development reasons. And sure, if Nintendo doesn't release a new platform next year, that means the first Call of Duty would probably be on Nintendo Switch. People are wondering how any of this is possible. How can Call of Duty be on Switch? Well, I remind you, Call of Duty was on the Wii at one point, and the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 were significantly more powerful. So it's not like this big, impossible task. I also want to remind you that they're not talking about a cloud version of the game and we can look at the actual statement here to know they're not talking about it it was supposed to have feature and content parity fine you could do that with a cloud version but you can experience call of duty just as xbox and playstation gamers enjoy call of duty that wouldn't be through the cloud that would be through local play also they're committed to providing long-term equal access to call of duty it's not equal if it's only cloud because you're not online you can't play it so yeah, this is for a full local version. The wording is very, very specific. This will be a localized Call of Duty for 10 years committed to coming to Nintendo platforms. Obviously, this deal could get extended beyond that. You know, they get to the end of the 10-year deal and you renegotiate to sort of see if this still makes sense to do or what the future of gaming is in a decade. But this is really cool. They've obviously offered a pretty much the exact same deal to Sony, who, well, we know Sony has said in the past that it's completely inadequate, which... I find to be really weird. Also, Sony right now actually has an advertising deal in place for Call of Duty for like the next two years. Uh, so I guess it's not like good for Sony because they want a marketing deal attached to it. I, 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 I don't know. All I know is that Phil Spencer, uh, the head of Sony, and several others are meeting behind closed doors with regulators out in Europe today. And that's probably why this was announced this morning to give more leverage. Of note, when this story broke, many other outlets are reporting that also today, two different labor unions representing employees at Activision Blizzard have actually come out in support of Microsoft buying the company and have noted that in all of the publicly available um, you know, discourse from the government, worrying about monopolies, worrying about this, there hasn't actually been anybody talking about the state of the employees that work there, which was something the federal government in the U.S. was suing Activision Blizzard over. So it's one of those things where in all of this, the governing bodies didn't even consider the people that actually work at Activision Blizzard want this deal to go through so their work conditions can improve. Apparently, that's a pretty big point that I think I would take in consideration as a governing body, the well-being of our citizens. You know, that is something that we should consider. Not saying that Microsoft's the best company to buy it, but 
If they don't buy them, someone else will. That's just the way it's going to go. It's the only way Activision Blizzard can avoid all of the lawsuits that are pending against them is to get somebody else in charge and sort of offload those to long-term lawsuits against Bobby Kotick and all the other uh, people that were involved with, unfortunately, mistreatment of employees. Let's move on to our next story, and this is supposedly a potential leak for a new Mario bundle launching on Mario Day. We're going to talk about why that's really interesting and fascinating compared to our report we did earlier. This comes from a user on Twitter that I don't really know that much about, uh, but it basically says a premiere, there's going to be a new release preview. A new Nintendo Switch bundle will be launched soon in Europe, including a Nintendo Switch console Red, a 2022 version, a Super Mario Odyssey game with a digital code, and something related to the Super Mario movie and they show what looks like a redacted potential preview image. We don't really know if this is even real. Now this is interesting that it'll be launching on March 10th because if you guys remember we actually did a GameStop uh, video where we talked about how they had a system listed in their back end for March 10th. Maybe this is it. Maybe it's a brand new Switch bundle. That is entirely possible. Of course this person's only talking about Europe. They're not talking about the US but if it's releasing there it probably would release here. That's my assumption, but that's assuming any of this is real. We don't obviously know. We speculated, of course, that it was probably for the Zelda edition system for pre-orders, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's more in line with a Mario bundle. Of, I mean, I'm just glad it's not a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bundle. You know, forget disappointment over it not being Zelda and it's another Mario thing. At least it's not Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I swear, if this is wrong and it turns out to be a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bundle... <laughs> Nintendo, you can bundle other games, all right? We should have Breath of the Wild bundles by now. Mario Odyssey bundles, Animal Crossing. Like, you should bundle Animal Crossing in with the Animal Crossing Switch. We've kind of reached the point that we... <laughs> it's just, it's a very strange generation where we just keep bundling the same game. Next up, to the absolute surprise of nobody, a Pokemon Presents has been announced for next week. It's happening on Monday the 27th, and we'll have 20 minutes of Pokemon news incoming. This is where we're going to find out if there's any Pokemon games coming. They're going to have news about other Pokemon things, the apps and, and the movies and the show. But I'm hoping that they got some Pokemon game news in here. Well, I, this is it. This is the event where we find out what the Pokemon company is doing game-wise in 2023. And our last story deals with Sony. Sony announced a new state of play today. They actually announced it in a weird way. They didn't do a lot of social media hubbub. They actually just announced it on their blog. It's really weird. I think they've now put it up on their Twitter, but it was like hours later. Whatever. Sony's announced a new state of play for this Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific featuring 15 minutes of Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, five PS VR 2 games, and new looks at games from third-party partners. We will be live reacting to this, of course, on Thursday. And I just want to note that, obviously, they're being very specific at what they're showing. State of plays tend to not be as grandiose as Nintendo Directs. They're very obvious. Like, watch this if you're interested in PS VR 2, or obviously, specifically, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. We're going to live react to everything. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, we'll see if Suicide Squad's another game I'll be picking up for PS5 or not. It's cool. Um, I'm not interested in PSVR 2, but you know what? I like to keep up to date on what's happening with it, so I guess we'll do that. What I want you to do if you made it to the end of the video is go down below and let me know which type of Pikmin is your favorite. You can Google search. You can look them up. If you don't remember all the different Pikmin types from Pikmin 1, 2, and 3, Maybe it's the new type coming up that you know, we haven't really played around with. I'm just saying, go down below in those comments, click clack away, let me know what your favorite Pikmin type is and why. I'd like to see some uh, descriptions added to this. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.